Hey folks, uh, today we're going to be looking at the long profile of a river. So all the way from right up in the source to the river mouth. Now to do this, if you can just draw a pretty basic uh, shape. So start off like this and then if you imagine the gradient going from the source is quite steep and then it levels out by the time it gets to the river mouth. Um, and then we're going to just make this like a little bit kind of 3D. Don't worry if it's not perfect, it's not, not about that at all. Just kind of create a shape a bit like that with um, a river. So we're going to start up here, just draw in some tributaries and then just give the river a bit of shape. So as we go further down, we're going to get those meanders and then eventually it's going to flow out uh, to the estuary and then out of the river uh, to the sea. So yeah, something kind of a little bit like that, if that makes sense. I know that's the river there, but we'll just, just dot that across. So then we're going to split it up into sections. Now to do this, if you just do some uh, kind of dashes down here, like that, and then take it across as well. And then again, a bit further down. So what we're doing here is we're just kind of separating our upper course, our middle course, and our lower course. And really don't worry about the shape of your river or anything like that, because this is an overview of this kind of long profile um, and the kind of landforms and the things that are happening along it. Okay, um, we've got this clear sign of gradient um, and we also, I suppose we want to label those. Let's do that first. So if we put upper, upper course over here and then middle course, quite easy the words to do with rivers they all kind of make sense they're just there is quite a lot of um, terminology quite a lot of new keywords with this one now if you're studying AQA GCSE geography you'll need to know that this is uh, rivers is always in the exam it's one of um, the sections that it is technically an optional section but it's if it's if it's one you're taught it's always there so there's coasts rivers and glaciation and most schools will do coasts and rivers so yeah rivers is a really important one so let's have a look we've got um right up here if we draw an arrow the source of the river now most rivers not not every single river okay but most rivers will start up in the highlands and for most rivers in the UK we, it's kind of boggy kind of marshland um, uh, or moorland it's it's a sort of sponge like ground uh, and it holds a lot of moisture and from that you get these tiny little sort of tiny little streams uh, starting and then eventually uh, a main kind of river will form and as you go down you'll notice this area has quite steep gradient. Now the word gradient is to do with height of the land so it's quite steep here and then it basically becomes more gentle and you can actually use that word so gentle gradient in the middle course and then by the lower course it's generally pretty flat um, maybe just a few meters above sea level but yeah pretty flat and then as the water from the river finds its way to the sea uh, this is what we call the river mouth okay and that can be in an estuary it can be that it just literally meets the sea um, and flows out that way uh, but yeah sometimes we can see an estuary there so what we're going to look at today is some of the landforms that you might find at different places. So starting with the upper course, just put a little bullet point in here um, and write V-shaped valleys. These are very often found um, kind of in this area uh, where these little uh, smaller streams are gathering and carving through the landscape. And what they look like, you can draw some to the side, um, is they look kind of a bit like this. Um, there we go. So you can can you see the V in the in the shape? There's a V. There's a V. 
So it's that kind of V shape, I'm doing it with my hands, but yeah, the V shape that um, we're talking about, okay? And that's because if we draw this kind of box like this, the if we did a little cross section of the river at this stage, uh, it would look kind of like this. So it would have a really narrow and very sort of thin channel. So there would be steep sides, Right. steep sides like that and a thin I mean in places you just step over it it's that thin um, but a thin and shallow channel so you could walk around in it you could have a look at the river load you might also see you know the kind of boulders and um, biggest bigger pieces of sediment this is also the place where we find waterfalls okay with those steep sides and gorges uh, that are left behind by the waterfall uh, we also might find rapids where the water is moving quite quickly over uh, the river load. And this is all happening because of vertical erosion. That means that, you know, a lot of the erosion is happening vertically due to gravity because of that steep, steep gradient. So that's an overview kind of the upper course and you would be expected in an exam to know how those things form. Now I have got other videos. I've definitely got one on waterfalls. Um, not so sure about V-shaped valleys, but um, do have a look at some of the other videos to find out individually how those things form. So then as we move on to the middle course, the key thing, you can see it here, is those meanders. Okay, lots of meanders. And then when they, in fact we could draw one in there, uh, I'll draw one down here. Um, when they are very, very pronounced meanders, so they're very, very tight at the neck, they can leave behind an oxbow lake. So if you write oxbow lake, that's very common to find there as well. And this is because of lateral erosion. So lateral um, erosion is side to side. Okay, so it's happening... Uh, kind of like left and right, if you imagine, rather than vertical erosion, which is happening, you know, um, down, downwards. Now, I'll do a little drawing, like I did for the V-shaped valley, so we'll do a little drawing of a meander. So, this is the river, I'll draw it kind of like this. It's quite, the neck of the meander is quite close together, okay? So, imagine that is uh, the meander, and then basically, over time, what would happen, so if we just draw that on a bit, what would happen is the river would cut this corner and the flow of the river would leave behind this Oxbow Lake, so it would end up looking kind of like that. And the river would carry on its course and eventually that Oxbow Lake will just dry up. Um, it will, yeah, eventually it will dry up, but rivers are dynamic and amazing and they're changing all the time. So you can find these Oxbow Lakes, you know, along all of the world's rivers, really. Um, but some, you can see evidence from satellite pictures of them dried up. You can see new ones. You can see the movement from above. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, and then let's do the cross section as well. So you notice I've made it a little bit wider this time because... There is a kind of more gentle slope. The channel itself is wider and deeper. So everything's everything's a bit wider and deeper. I'll just colour that in. So this is like a slice through the river, basically. So we want to say a wider channel. Okay, it's also um, deeper. So we've got deeper and wider channel and more um, uh, slope, sloping sides. Okay, so that that's the middle course for you, just as a complete kind of overview. And then we're left with the lower course and I can see I haven't got a great deal of room, so I'm gonna write floodplain where the floodplain actually is. So up here. So floodplains, um, flat land either side of the river that's meant to flood, clues in the name. It's um, it's an area that 
really is kind of like a natural sponge. It should just soak up the water as the river naturally floods. Um, and then the other word that we're going to put in there, the other landform is an estuary. Estuary. There we go. Now an estuary um, is a space that uh, is really good for wildlife, really good for birds. It's like salt marsh. It's a natural kind of intertidal zone. Um, and these, just, just a harbour near me is one um, pool harbour. Any of those big natural harbours are often estuaries. And this area is just perfect for uh, just yeah, wildlife and enjoying it. It's nice flat land so you can walk around easily. Um, and if we drew that as our cross section, so if we do that again, again, I'm sort of a little bit wide at this time, we'll notice there's almost no hilly land at all. Uh, the river is super wide at this stage. Okay, so a nice wide river. And I probably should have drawn this a little bit deeper because it does get quite deep as well. So we want to say deep, wide channel. And then an arrow to this land. And it, we want to say flat, wide floodplain. Now, because that land is lovely and flat, and it's near a lovely bit of water, very often gets built on, which is, well, that's a diff that's for a different video, but all to do with flooding, really, and, and houses and uh, and problems. Uh, but na naturally, rivers should flood, okay? So we, we naturally want to keep that floodplain for them. Right, there you go. There's your kind of overview of a long profile of a river. I hope that's helpful.